Hey everybody, welcome to the Vinyl Channel. I'm the Vinyl Guy Boss. So on this episode, I'm going to be talking about the MoFi scandal that's been going on for the for the past week or so. Uh, I'm talking about the mobility, uh, the the Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs, and uh, they're they're not divulging uh, other information on whether digital is being used and uh, and making their their records or not. So uh, I'm going to talk all about this coming up. So stick around and don't touch that dial. Okay, everybody. So, uh, scandal is kind of a, a big word there, but but the bottom line is that uh, mobile fidelity for quite a while uh, has been using uh, digital in creating their uh, rec their records, especially those where they would say it came from an analog source. A lot of people uh, were assuming that uh, it was a pure analog signal all the way through from the beginning, from like the tape all the way through to uh, the creating of the lacquers uh, and, and on to making the masters. So, um, you know, in my opinion, it's not a big deal. Uh, when you start getting into uh, uh, the, qual the quality of uh, the digital that MoFi uses and even on CDs, 95% uh, uh, of uh, professional sound engineers uh, all say that there's virtually no difference between analog and digital. So, uh, so I don't see, you know, I can understand why people would want MoFi to be more transparent and to say somewhere on the website somewhere that they are using digital or, or they might be using digital, et cetera, et cetera. But the bottom line, it doesn't matter. All their stuff sounds amazing. All their stuff sounds good. And that's because they are mastering for vinyl. That's the important thing. Uh, they're saying that they're mastering for vinyl. So I want to show you here uh, a uh, hype sticker that I got uh, off of a recent purchase off of uh, the Muppet Movie soundtrack. And as you can see here, it clearly says... Uh, mastered for vinyl. That's what's important, okay? Because we want it to sound proper on vinyl. Uh, when you master for a CD, when you, uh, it sounds different than when you master when, than when you master for vinyl. So we want it to, to, to be mastered for, for vinyl and mastered in an excellent way. Uh, and that's exactly what MoFi does. So uh, I can understand why people would want it to be more transparent. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Now, I do have a record here. Uh, this is from, I think it's from 1980. But as you can see here, it says here, it says a digital recording. Okay? And that's because this was originally a digital recording. Okay? But it's still an analog record, and they have to master for analog. Uh, this record sounds amazing. It's it's a great sounding pressing. It doesn't matter that they, that they started that with a, with a digital source as... Uh, as again, uh, there's virtually no difference between uh, a digital and analog as far as the human ears go when getting up to very high quality digital. So, um, but it would be nice if they had done something, if MoFi had done something like this and said a digital recording or, you know, digital somewhere. So, um, you know, it would have been a good thing. Now, since all this transpired, uh, MoFi has in the last week updated their website. Now last weekend, I actually was on their website. I didn't see what I saw today, so I'm not sure exactly what day they modified it. But right there on the main website, it says an apology to our customers. And uh, I'll put it up here on the screen uh, so you can see it. But, the, but basically what they're saying is that they apologize that they have not been transparent and that um, from now on they will let us know uh, the exact processes that they use to creating their records, if it's, uh, you know, uh, if they're using analog and they're mastering on digital or whatever, uh, they're going to start doing that. Now, um, I had recently purchased this uh, record from, uh, from, from MoFi, okay? And, and as a matter of fact, I have a video up where I'm doing an unboxing of this. So it's about, a, I think it's the two videos back. But I remember when I bought this, and right on the MoFi website, all it said was source from analog, or yeah, I think it says source from original analog tapes, and that's or something to that effect. That's all it said. So now I'm gonna put, I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the screen again. As you can see here, it says it's going from anal, it's going from uh, analog to digital. So uh, they definitely have uh, 
listen to the customers and that is not a bad thing i have a few other um uh mofi things here when i'm going to show you so i have this one here so this one here is definitely all analog there's no digital in this because it was made in 1977. Uh, sometimes these come out about a year after the original pressing so this might this might have come out in 78 i'm not i'm not really sure of the exact date but either way uh so it's you know it's a it's an amazing sounding record uh amazing sounding pressing and it's all analog and uh so um but uh, I, really, I really like this pressing here. And I also have this one here that I bought um, uh, a, a couple years ago. Uh, this one here is, uh, again, a MoFi pressing. And uh, from what I understand, uh, I heard somebody else on the VEC talk about this. If it says Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs on the top instead of original master recording, that was their code uh, per se that, um, that, it was, it, that was converted to to digital along the way, but now we know that that's probably not the case, that they, they probably have been doing this with most of their pressings. So, uh, so I'm not really sure uh, why this one says uh, Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs across the top here, and the other one says Original Master Recording. I'm not really sure, uh, you know, what their, what their ideology is in the two names. Now I do have something interesting here that I wanna go ahead and show you as well. Now, I got this about five years ago, and it would have been real nice if uh, MoFi had been doing something like this. So this is the Beatles' white album in mono. Uh, it was um, remastered, okay? And uh, I'll go ahead and put a picture up of this, uh, of this hype sticker so you can read it. But I'll read it to you. It says here, um, these heavyweight 100 gram vinyl records are cut from the original master tapes. The mastering team used a completely analog signal path and were guided by the notes made by the cutting engineer for the first pressings of the discs. The packaging uh, replicates the artwork and construction of the original album sleeve. So the important words on this were a completely analog signal path. So that's what's important here and that tells me uh, that there is no uh, digital mastering, no digital recordings used in pressing this record. So uh, I already made it clear, and this is something that uh, MoFi uh, could have been doing uh, right along. Okay, so the rest of the video, I want to talk about alternatives uh, that are out there or were out there uh, for uh, MoFi for the Mobile Fidelity uh, pressings. And uh, these are records that were all these are uh, records that are pressed uh, that were supposed to be much higher quality uh, than the standard pressings that you would uh, find find in, in, in a store. So I'm going to show you some of these here. Okay. So the first one here is um, Leonard Skinner's uh, uh, Second Helping. So this is uh, the the recording. Okay. So it says here. Um, 100% analog masters, officially licensed and authorized for release by the record label, which is uh, quality record pressing. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, put up a, um, uh, a closer look at this so you can see it. So they were doing kind of like what MoFi was doing because it says here 100% analog masters. Okay, great and fine, but uh, uh, so we're starting with the analog masters, but is digital being used uh, anywhere along, along the path or is it a, a pure analog signal all the way through to cutting up the lacquers? So uh, that's something that they, did, they I did not include here and it's unlikely that they had put that information on the website when you went to order it. So it's not just uh, MoFi that's going to have to make some changes. There's definitely going to have to be some industry changes as well. So, but um, uh, this here was actually uh, pressed on two records. It normally comes uh, as one record, but they went ahead and pressed this on two records, mastered at 33 RPM, which uh, in increases the fidelity, increases uh, how it sounds. And this uh, this record does sound uh, really, really amazing. So, uh, but yeah, um, I had that pressing. Okay, and I have another one here. Uh, this is uh, Dire Straits Brother Brothers and Arm, uh, and Arms. Uh, we, it's 180 gram high performance vinyl because sound matters. Has to be mastered uh, by um, Stan Ricker. Uh, uh, plated and pressed at RTI. So this is another one done by a record uh, pressing plant. RTI is a record uh, pressing plant. 
Now it's important to note that um, uh, Brothers in Arm itself was mastered digitally, so of course uh, any source is going to be digital as well. So th that's not a question on this one. But but, but this one here was also uh, uh, normally it came on one record, but this is done on on two records. I should have showed you in the last one as well, but as you can see here it has two records. And so they took the one record and they spread it on two records, pressed at 33 RPM, and that is uh, th theoretically supposed to increase the quality of the of the recording. And this one does sound it does sound pretty amazing. Okay, now another one here, and this one is by Journey. Uh, this is Dream After Dream. Uh, so this one was put out by uh, CBS Master Sound. So CBS Records put this out, uh, and um, it says up here that it's half speed mastered. So uh, extended range record recording. So this was another company that competed with MoFi, uh, and it is a really, really, a really uh, great sounding recording as well. And another one here. So this uh, uh, this company is no longer around anymore. But they did put out quite a few discs. I think about 50 or so discs uh, through the time that they were in business. But uh, this is Nautilus uh, Nautilus Recording Super Discs. So uh, it's uh, pretty much like MoFi. Uh, 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 Nautilus uh, obtained the masters, and uh, again. Uh, this was uh, done in this. This was released in '81, so uh, so this would have been all analog. So it says back on here, um, a half-speed mastered disc. Uh, so this is another half-speed mastered. That's another way for them to increase the overall the the overall quality. But uh, yeah, so it is a very good a uh, very good sounding record, and I have several of these in my collection. All right, and I have one more here for you. I'd be remiss if I didn't go ahead and talk about this. So this here is a Japanese pressing. Uh, this here is Weird Al Yankovic Eat It. So uh, Japanese pressings are pretty easy to uh, uh, be identified as they have this OB strip on the side here, uh, usually with some Japanese writing on it. So uh, Japanese records are for the most part um, prized uh, uh, by vinyl collectors because the, uh, uh, they're supposed to be pressed from virgin, virgin vinyl and extra care is done in, in pressing these records. And most people agree that they typically sound better than records uh, 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 pressed in other areas of the world. So I did want to go ahead and bring this up, although you know this is not a direct competitor per se to MoFi. Uh, some people uh, do actually prize these uh, for their high quality. Okay, and that's all I have for you today. I do want to thank you for joining me. If you have not subscribed to my channel, uh, now is a great, great time to do so. Don't forget to go ahead and tap on that subscribe button and bash on that bell for notifications. And that way you know when I put up brand new videos, just like this one here. And uh, But again, I do, I do want to thank everybody, and I'll see you all next time.